United four, Wolverhampton three. Who knew that Man United had four goals in the bag? You know, who knew they had it in them? I cannot believe the game of football I've just witnessed, right? And the scoreline is a bit more flattering than it seems. You know, Man United nearly had it themselves to blame. You know, Anthony coming on was very questionable. Ahmad can't get a game. But you know what? This result, you know what? Proper performance. You can't knock Man United's performance there, you know, with that dodgy penalty, which we will talk about. And also many other things, you know. But look, Man United won a game. You know, Ten Hag has some big balls. And why I say he does, because he started Marcus Rashford and it paid off with a good performance in my eyes. You know, you know, the fans could really be on the backside of things, but, you know, it paid off. And you know what? Good gamble. But other than that, star boy, Kobe Mainu, oh my God, who knew he can bend it like Beckham, you know, into that bottom corner. I didn't realise he had that Terry Henry-esque type finishing him, but he did. But look, man, I'm happy. You should be happy and we should continue to be happy. Big up. But yeah, please smash the like button and I'm going to dive into the game and actually pretty much be as objective as I can because it wouldn't be fair if I go off on the bias since I am a Manchester United supporter. So, Ten Hag. Starting Rashford was very questionable. Even for me, I was questioning it, thinking, you know what? I don't know what he's doing here. This best payoff, you know, and it did pay off. You know, Marcus Rashford had a point to prove, right? And, you know, he was actually tracking back. You know, he was actually getting in some good areas, playing some good passes, not being greedy in some areas. I thought he could have shot, to be fair. But how many games can this continue for? Is it just a gimmick? We're yet to see the next game, and I don't want to get ahead of myself too soon. The lineup was pretty much the strongest lineup you can go with, and Man United were cruising in the first half. They made Wolverhampton look like puppies. But they did not take their chances. You know, Hoyland missing the chance in first and second half, which, you know, fair play to him. I couldn't believe he got a goal and a very good assist, in my opinion. You know, um, limited them, the, the, how tight it was. You know, it was pretty much like a 5-3-2 at times, maybe 5-4-1. Sometimes even Hoyland dropping deep and making a very, you know, 5-5. Five and five. It just absolutely unit and broke together on transition. You know, Wolves were not looking the same as they did. They probably missed a Huangi Chan today, uh, in fairness, you know. I don't really want to talk about the, the penalty decision the same way I didn't really want to talk about it when it came to Liverpool yesterday. We can all have our opinions, right? But, you know, Man United should be taking their chances and avoiding such situations. The Molyneux is very hard ground to go to. You know, they've been labelled giant killers. You know, they've absolutely tore Chelsea a new one. You know, Tottenham, they came back in the very end. You know, they dealt with Manchester City. I think I think Liverpool got a result there. And even they gave them a tough time at first and before Liverpool came back. So it's a tough ground. And Man United and Wolves typically have a, a tight battle between themselves. But for me, you know, Tenor got it right until he nearly didn't. Right? I think the substitutions nearly killed us. You know, other than the McTominay one, which I can agree with, Casemiro, you know, I thought he had a very good game. But... He didn't nearly do himself any favours. He nearly got sent off. Should he have been sent off? Let me know in the comments. But please smash the like button. Just a little small reminder. It's totally free. Pause the video and come back to this. And give me your thoughts and, and comments as well, which would be appreciated. I do like conversations uh, when possible. Um, Scott McTominay, I was thinking, mm, I don't know, but I could understand it. Putting Cobby in a six makes a little bit more sense. You know, Cobby, you know, for his little bit quiet in an eight, you can you could pretty much say maybe he's missing a bit of an engine to play as an eight. Maybe his future role is actually in the six. But then he brought in Anthony, and I don't want to be negative to or anything like this, but Anthony is absolutely useless, and he nearly cost us the game, and that's where Pedro Neto got his goal from. Him trying to shoot in situations nearly cost us the game more than once, right? I can't believe Man United actually won a game of football. That's the craziest part about it. I am not going to get giddy over this, but I will be objective. Man United wasted chance after chance after chance and it nearly, nearly killed us, right? I was very impressed with the football. I loved it. You know, I could talk about Delo. You know, the way he, for that first goal, Delo was pretty much the one that set it forward. He had ab an absolute mint game, in my opinion, you know, and I thought Garnacho did as well. But when I say mint, mint's not good enough. We're talking about crisp, the fine margins, the ones where you, when you put the ball into the back post, that Hoyland will get a chance to potentially score. You know, even Bruno Fernandes, average game, got an assist from a corner, could have done better. Um, but his all-round game wasn't too sad. You know, Casemiro, you know, first, what, two minutes? Not even that. I, th I think it was something like two and a half minutes. Why are you getting yourself booked, mate? Like, you, like what? there was no need for it. Already booked, and now you have to watch your tackles. You know, Hoyland, if you go over to the Hoyland space, you know, I thought he had more time than you think. This is where the experience shows. 
this is where you need to find your feet and absolutely come through for the team. 20 years old or not, you know, I'm very happy you got a goal and assist, but it could have been more. I want more, you know. And then I'm looking around elsewhere. Luke Shaw had a decent game and then he kind of fell off in the second half. You know, Pedro Neto got the better of him. Pedro Neto was a very good winger. Cunha was nullified. Ball carrying skills were decent, winning some decent free kicks in the second half. And it was expected. Just, just, just trust Manchester United to nearly throw away lead. Oh my God, when that Pedro Neto goal, I was... I was just like, oh, I've had enough. I didn't even blame the manager at this point. I can question his decision, but the players on the field are there to do a job. You brought on Maguire, you brought on Evans, you showed up things. I understand it. It's called good management or good game management. You'd call that in hindsight. But Anthony, he's got to stop. He's got to go. I've had enough of him. But all round basis, I don't really want guys and rivals in here like coming at me, right? I've praised other teams. You know, I've been quite fair on other teams. You know, you have to look at Wolves' goals. Uh, the one that, uh, what's it called? The right centre back Kilman uh, scored. It was from a set piece. The dodgy penalty, whether you think it's a penalty or not, is up to you. Totally up to you. Feel free, like whether you comment. I don't believe it was a penalty. I don't even think he touched him. You know, same thing with the Van Dyke. I thought the Van Dyke penalty, at least one of them, was a penalty. It's the same kind of situation, but worse. But it didn't get given. So I don't want to. I don't want to put the game over to a refereeing decision. I want to talk about the game for what it actually stands for. You know, and how many chances Man United missed to. Forget about how many goals they score. You could have buried this game a long, long time ago. And you need, and to be fair, they nearly had ourselves to only blame, right? And then obviously the third goal was absolutely brilliant. You know, Pedro Neto, that, that's, this is why a lot of clubs are after him and they're just worrying about his injury record all the time. But yeah, this, the, the, the game management nearly killed us until it nearly didn't kill us. You know, McTominay as well could have got a second goal. Surprise, surprise, top goal scorer of Man United. That's a worrying stat again, once again. But I was, I was pleased. I didn't. I wrote this game off completely, and I think many others wrote this game off as well. I didn't expect to get three points, let alone a draw. And if you look at that game, and you did watch the game, and not the scoreline, you can even see through highlights, right? That Man United got themselves together for once. Something rallied there, and I'm not going to get gassed because we got West Ham next. West Ham just drew uh, drew to Bournemouth, and I'm pretty sure David Moyes wants to set up in a way where he wants to frustrate Man United next game and play on the break. And this is where when Man United come up against low blocks. How do you do? You know, you know that chart. How do you do? You know, all of that kind of stuff. So, and that's where we got killed by Bournemouth. So I don't want to get over ecstatic about this result, but I'm definitely, definitely uh, happy to have three points and going further away from those bums called Chelsea. Um, but yeah, and also climbing up the table. I think we're into seventh and not many points away from fourth, but it, it still is very far away because you just can't trust this team to put a run of, uh, run of wins together, you know. But Kobe, mind you, wow, man. I did not think he had that finish in him. I did not think that we was even going to go and win the game the way we did in a fashion we did. You know, after conceding how many late goals, like this, that's Wolves territory right there. How many late goals have they scored? Um, yeah, I'm over the moon, man. Look, even performance-wise, happier than more than like relaxed. I was still on the edge of my seat. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, kind of thing. But, you know, when was the last time Man United even scored four goals? That's, that's, that's still ringing in my head. Do I trust this manager? You're probably going to ask me, are you 10 again? Right now, he still needs to prove to me that he can galvanize the squad and go forward. Right now, I need to be proven a lot. You know, you need to go put a good run of uh, games together before I change my mind. Yeah, and you don't need... And the thing is, we just want to succeed as a club. And I say we, Man United fans, and rivals want to get onto us. And that's fair play and fair dues, right? But you've got to be your best selves before you start getting giddy and running away with this performance. You know, you had, you can see the three goals at the end of the day. You had your first team out there at the end of the day. Yes, they're still getting fit, but it's still a long way to go because if there was a better team out there, maybe would have, maybe would have got killed. But, you know, if we actually deep it, Wolves didn't actually have many chances. Man United actually defended very well. That's why I say the, the scoreline is a lot more flattering than it looks. You know, limited chances. Man United could have had 10 goals that game. And I'm not even joking. Please just go watch it for yourselves if you haven't. If you disagree, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have a, a debate on that but guys please smash a like button please please subscribe if you're new if you like the content i'll try to do many short videos as much as possible but big up man and yeah man i'm pretty sure you lot have a lot to say about it big up yourselves and hopefully you see me in the next one